maybe then we'll just continue on with the direction we've been talking about on communication and I think the term that was coming to me was the meditation is the passive nature of correction. So, just like we talked about communication as being entirely internal, there's a couple quotes that are coming to mind that use as a springboard for coming to just see that the passive nature of correction. The first one's from Page seven of the Song of Prayer. It's talking about humility. Humility brings peace because it does not claim that you must rule the universe nor judge all things as you would have them be. All little gods it gladly lays aside not in resentment, but in honesty and recognition that they do not serve. The truly humble have no goal but God because they need no idols, and defense no longer serves a purpose. Enemies are useless now because humility does not oppose. does not hide its shame because it is content with what it is, knowing creation is the will of God. So we've heard the quote before, love does not oppose, but this is just kind of another version of it. Humility does not oppose. Another thing that was coming to mind was, I think it's a review section in the course, the workbook on page 388. Part two that follows lesson 220. final phase of the workbook after 220 lessons have been completed and, and really it, it emphasizes the silence that we were talking about yesterday and how that is uh, there's probably two two forms of practice that kind of really come out of working through the workbook and getting to this latter part one of them, which is mentioned, is still in here, is where they you have a central thought. So they're still an attempt to, to use a thought to guide the mind into the meditative state. And then another form would be just more like a free form of not trying to think of anything. Not trying to even hold on to a central thought. Emptying the mind. And that's the form that that is the one that leads into the revelatory state in the sense that that's the one, that's the form that becomes your common means of practice. The other forms are where there's, whether they were visualizations or moving your eyes around the room or even holding on to a central idea are all preliminary to coming to the most common and for the advanced teacher of God, that's the that's the form that of meditation that you probably should embrace and try to practice the most. You're going to become trained. So I thought we might just go through through this review. So you set it up too. I will. I'll just read a paragraph from. 
page 363 in the text in the I Need Do Nothing section. Save time for me by only this one preparation and practice doing nothing else. I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance, a truly undivided loyalty. Believe it for just one instant and you will accomplish more than is given to a century of contemplation or a struggle against temptation. To do nothing, to do anything involves the body. And if you recognize you need do nothing, you have withdrawn the body's value from your mind. Here is the quick and open door through which you slip past centuries of effort and escape from time. This is the way in which sin loses all attraction right now. For here is time denied and past and future gone. Who needs do nothing has no need for time. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. And then from the workbook 391 on forgiveness. It says, the fourth paragraph, Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. In the beginning of the fourth paragraph, do nothing then, and let forgiveness show you what to do through him who is your guide, your savior and protector, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success. I think all those passages really just point to the sense of, of it being a passive correction not an active correction in any sense. Yeah, I think a little bit of a glimmer of it was yesterday when we had that little situation at Bear Lake or whatever, and then on the way home just the, just the sense of silence without, or even at the time there, not even having to to uh, try to make an active correction. We talked a little bit about that. You know, Rhonda, you had asked even while we were there, is there anything I have to do here? And we talked a little bit about it when we had the session at the table, too, about. And more cases than not, it's like you start to see that that is not truth battling against illusions or the light and darkness. It's just a, just what being able to see that only only illusions can battle in that kind of awareness and in that recognition that you don't attempt to take a side. You don't, per, you don't even attempt to perceive that an injustice or an unfairness is, is taking place because you realize that if you perceive injustice or you perceive someone or being unfairly treated or whatever, that that is just another way of saying you're denying the Father. There could be no injustices and God being who he is. It just has to mean that injustices, conflicts are all misperceptions. So we'll start
start on page 388. Words will mean little now. We use them but as guides on which we do not now depend. For now we seek direct experience of truth alone. The lessons that remain are merely introductions to the times in which we leave the world of pain and go to enter peace. Now we begin to reach the goal this course has set and find the end toward which our practicing was always geared. Now we attempt to let the exercises be merely a beginning, for we wait in quiet expectation for our God and Father. He has promised he will take the final step himself, and we are sure his promises are kept. We have come far along the road, and now we wait for him. We will continue spending time with him each morning and at night, as long as makes us happy. We will not consider time a matter of, direction, of duration now. We use as much as we will need for the result that we desire. Nor will we forget our hourly remembrance in between calling to God when we have need of Him as we are tempted to forget our goal. It's a beautiful sentence. We will not consider time a matter of duration now.